Hey, Matt from Audio Workshop. I thought I'd do a video series on wireless microphones, how they work, but also best practices to get the most out of your system or systems. We find ourselves now sharing spectrum with digital TV, which is a little bit complicated and a little bit interesting at times. Um, but I also think that we, we want more wireless systems working in our venues, and that adds complexity too. So to start off with today, we'd start right back at the basics, and we'll talk about the components of the system and how they work. So we're probably familiar, but uh, the first thing up is the transmitter. Um, in this particular case, it's a handheld transmitter, but we can also get body pack transmitters that we use with lapels and headset microphones, and we can also get instrument transmitters. Um, for example, it could be a, a small microphone transmitter that clips on the bell of a saxophone, um, well, so they can be wireless too. The second uh, component in the system is the receiver. In this case, it's a WMS420 AKG system, uh, dual antenna diversity system. And they're the two components that we need to make a wireless system work, a transmitter and a receiver. In the audio world, we're probably used to talking about turning acoustic energy into electric energy. And at the end of a signal chain, we have a loudspeaker in our PA systems that turns electrical energy back into acoustic energy so we can actually hear ourselves sing, speak, play our instruments, hear the band, etc. Um, with wireless systems, that's actually no different to start off with. We're, we're turning um, acoustic energy, in this case my voice, uh, into electric energy through the, the diaphragm um, and uh, capture of the microphone. But there's a few other circuits in a wireless microphone that we're going to talk about. So one of the first circuits in there to talk about is the companding circuit. So companding does a pre-emphasis EQ curve and then compresses that signal by about 2 to 1 ratio so that the information that we're transferring is less. Um, once it's gone through that stage, the audio signal then goes through a voltage-controlled oscillator that turns the audio signal into a modulated radio signal. With radio frequencies, there are two main types of modulation. The first one, which we've probably heard of, is AM. We've all probably had an AM transistor, depending on how old we are, um, and listened to the, the cricket. But um, AM stands for amplitude modulation, where there is a fixed carrier frequency, um, but it, the system amplitude changes whether it's up and down to transmit the additional information. This system is okay, um, but it has some limitations, and, and two of those is the dynamic range and the frequency response. AM generally has a, a dynamic range of about 90 dB, and frequencies at response from about 50 hertz to only 9 kilohertz. So really for audio, it's not up to scratch, and we, we, we want a better quality audio signal at the end of the day to that. So the other type is frequency modulation, or FM, which we've probably heard of, particularly if we're talking in, in radio stations. Um, but frequency modulation doesn't have a fixed frequency carrier. It has a main frequency carrier, and then it deviates either side of that frequency um, in terms of its frequency to transmit the additional information. So all of a sudden, now we have a frequency response of 50 hertz to 15 kilohertz and a dynamic range probably up around about 100 dB, which for most um, wireless uses is more than adequate for what we're wanting. Um, so once it's transmitted from there, it's going across the the area, the venue, um, with a radio wave, a, f a frequency modulated radio wave, which is transmitting the organ or audio signal, sorry, in terms of frequency response, dynamic range. The receiver then picks up that radio frequency information and does the opposite. So it comes in as a modulated signal, it demodulates it back into an audio signal, it de-emphasizes the EQ curve that was originally done with the um, transmitter, and it expands the signal back to its full normal dynamic range, and, um, and then spits it out the outputs as a normal audio signal, so that you can hear us like you're hearing me. That's pretty much, at the basics, how a radio system works. 
So next time we're going to talk about a little bit more and get under the hood a little bit deeper. Um, we're not going to bore you with too much technical knowledge, but we're also going to start talking about how you're actually going to get the best out of your radio system so that you don't have dropouts, don't have interference, don't have horrible bangs and pops and sort of noises in your system. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon. Cheers. One, two, three, four.